Dear friends, it's a great pleasure for me to come again here and to speak to you. Uh, it's my pleasure to overview some of graph models for which it's, it's possible to calculate modularity exactly or to understand how it behaves asymptotically in some parameters. I would like to speak about different, very important graph models which appear in real life as well as in pure mathematics. So it's possible to calculate modularity exactly, but this is very hard and not for any possible model, of course. So the main quantity, you of course know it, and I can switch this slide, just uh, the difference between the two values uh, which are uh, written down here, uh, we consider some partition of, we would denote by E of V the number of edges of G with both vertices in A, the edge contribution, the edge tax. Uh, you, of course, know it since you already seen this long and difficult formula which had to be optimized. But we are interested in finding the maximum value uh, of this quantity, the maximum value over all possible partitions of uh, the ground set of vertices. Uh, so the intuition, you already know it as well. Stanislav told you something about it and uh, he was very good in this. So of course, it has many applications in clustering algorithms, you know it as well. And as, as I've already told you, I suppose to survey some theoretical bounds for modularity in different important graph models. Uh, so I start by very important random graph models, which are designed to reflect the reality of web graphs, of social networks, of biological networks in some sense. This is the so-called preferential attachment models, which are very important, many, many different applications in many, many different companies, including Yandex, uh, Huawei, Sberbank, and so on. So uh, as I've already told you about the motivation and uh, the research was started in, <clears throat> in the end of 90s of the 20th century by a tremendous amount of different authors. <clears throat> the first mathematical model was proposed by Bolobash and Riordan in the beginning of 2000. And uh, this is the model of preferential attachment, which, which reflects the sparsity of a real world network like web graph, and which also reflects some other very important features of uh, this real world uh, network. So the mathematical model here <clears throat> is depicted exactly, construct a random graph, a random graph, not uh, just a fixed graph, but a random one with probability distribution, G, M, N, which has N vertices and M times N edges, which means it's sparse really. <clears throat> so uh, let us denote by D sub G of V, the degree of a vertex V in a graph G. And first consider the case uh, in which M is equal to one. So the number of vertices is exactly equal to the number of edges. This is a very sparse graph, which is very close to a tree, of course. Uh, let us start the random process of creating this graph by G11, uh, one, one, which is a graph just with one vertex V sub one and one loop, <clears throat> just like this. <clears throat> now, given a graph on N minus one step, we make uh, a new graph G sub one N by adding a new vertex V sub N and just one edge from it to a vertex V sub I, which is picked randomly uh, we, uh, from the set V sub one and so on V sub n with probability, which is depicted here. The probability is just designed to reflect preferential attachment. The vertex prefers to attach to a previous vertex, which has a bigger degree, which has bigger degree. The degree is bigger. The probability to attach to it is also bigger. Uh, now let's consider the case M is greater strictly to one, which is more realistic in fact. In reality, we have not uh, so sparse graphs. Uh, and we take uh, a just constructed graph G sub one M times N, and we make a new random graph G sub M N <clears throat> from this graph by gluing a cluster of vertices V sub one V sub N in, into just one vertex V sub one prime. Uh, the second cluster of M vertices 
starting from V sub M plus one and ending by V to M into the second big vertex, which is called here V, v sub two prime and so on. So we have already N vertices and uh, just M times N edges here. Uh, this graph reflects well the reality of web graphs, of social networks, of some biological networks and so on. But it's random, of course. And there is a very interesting another model, which is called spatial preferential attachment, which also uses, incorporates this idea of uh, preferential attachment to prefer to attach to, uh, to someone who is already cited. But uh, also it reflects some spatial properties of the position of vertices. Uh, maybe it's a rather involved, difficult model. I don't want to uh, to kill you by constructing such <clears throat> difficult models, but uh, let me not kill you. Let me just show you the, the definition of the model. So we consider a cube in some m-dimensional space, and we consider the so-called torus metric on it. You see it here, um, just glues. Uh, faces of this cube. <clears throat> we fix some parameters P, A sub one, A sub two, and we have some properties of these parameters. And now we'll get a sequence G sub T as before, some sequence of random graphs with sets of edges V sub T and sets, uh, sorry, sets of vertices V sub T and edges E sub T. Before we get it, we uh, make some definitions, deck minus is the in degree of a vertex V in V sub T and the same is for deck plus. So we define the so-called sphere of influence S of V and T as the ball centered at V at the vertex V with volume equal to this value, which is depicted here. It's a sphere of influence of this vertex. And the process begins at time zero with the empty graph, with the null graph just. <clears throat> now let us let's assume that t is greater than or equal to one, and we transit from g sub t minus one to g sub t to a new graph. We again add one just one vertex v sub t chosen uniformly at random from s from the cube, and uh, next we independently for each vertex u in the previous set of vertices v sub t minus one, such that the new vertex V sub T belongs to its sphere of influence for each vertex independently. A directed edge V sub T to U is created with probability P. And this is some feast of mathematics, of course, I understand. But uh, the motivation for such model is, for example, written down here. Uh, the SPA model produces scale-free networks, which uh, have many of the characteristics of the real life networks. For example, it was shown that SPA model gave the best fit for a series of social networks derived from Facebook. <clears throat> okay, so now I come to the modularity in preferential attachment models and the two models I just told you about. It's possible to bound the modularity in different regimes for different parameters of the models in order to understand how this uh, important par parameter, how these important characteristics uh, behaves in the real networks, real world networks. For example, in 2017, and all, and all the results are very, very recent. Uh, in 2017, there was a, a joint work of myself, my former student Ludmila Prokhorenkova, who now works at the MIPT and in Yandex, and uh, by Pavel Pralat, who is from Canada, uh, we uh, succeeded in proving the following lower and upper bounds for the maximum modularity of the preferential attachment random graph. Here, uh, WHP means uh, with high probability, since of course the graph is random, so uh, we can say something only with probability tending to one as n tends to infinity. The number of vertices must tend to infinity. And in this case, we can limit from below by some asymptotic over M <clears throat> in our quantity. It's also possible to bound it from above for every M greater than or equal to two, it's bounded this way. And uh, even more for M greater than or equal to three, it's bounded from above by 15 over 16. It's just no asymptotical term <clears throat> factor here. 
a conjecture is written down here, but uh, it's very far from being proved. Uh, we just need to prove that Q star tends to zero. And unfortunately, even this is not yet proved. And of course, everyone is invited uh, to join us and to try to prove this conjecture here. And for SPA model, for spatial preferential attachment, the same authors in the same year, and in fact, in the same paper, succeeded in proving this terrible mathematical bound. But uh, mostly it means that Q star, the maximum uh, modularity of uh, this random graph, tends to one as t as the main parameter tends to infinity. So this is very important to understand such asymptotical properties of clustering characteristics. But uh, you may ask if you know something about random graphs, what happens in just in the binomial model, which is very classical and belongs to Erdos and Rainey was considered for many, many years. Now I just remind you that the binomial model is as follows. Uh, we consider some real number p line in the segment between zero and one, and we take some natural number n, the number of vertices. Now the random graph g of n p has uh, the set from one to n as its set of vertices, and the edges are drawn independently without any loops, any directions and multiplicity, each with probability p. <clears throat> and this is a classical model, as I've already told you. Of course, it doesn't reflect properties of complex networks like web graphs, but for example, for um, connectivity properties, for properties of transportation networks, it's uh, very important and very useful. Uh, only in 2019, just one year ago, uh, the first uh, purely mathematical results were proven by uh, very famous people like, like Mike, Mark Diarmid and Skerman. I just show you these results. So uh, what does it mean, for example, n squared times p tends to infinity, but n times p is less than or equal to one plus little of one. It means that the graph is in fact very sparse, not very, very sparse, but it's very sparse, of course. It's very sparse, it, it's, it behaves like a forest. And uh, in this case, uh, of course, uh, the clustering modularity tends to one in probability. So with high probability, it tends to one. Uh, if uh, Q, if, sorry, um, this value M times P is already bounded from below by a constant which is strictly greater than one, but uh, again bounded from above by another constant and the two constants are, are different. So with high probability Q star is also bounded away from zero by some constant delta and bound it away from one by another value, uh, one minus delta. If finally uh, NP tends to infinity and the graph is uh, in some sense dense or really dense, then Q star tends to zero in probability, which is also uh, rather natural as you already know that for example, uh, the complete graph on N vertices of course has modularity equal to zero and here, you have uh, the convergence to zero in probability. <clears throat> okay, uh, as for Johnson's graphs, uh, I already, um, how to say it, Stanislav has already told you about them. So he has already um, advertised our results, but I just uh, remind you the definitions of this graph. Uh, maybe the second uh, definition is more familiar for you. You are more familiar with it since Stanislav gave it. We consider the three parameters R, S, and N from the set of natural numbers. We understand that S, S must be uh, strictly less than R, R must be strictly less than N. And uh, just to denote by the entire part of N, uh, and an element set, say a set of just one, two, three, and so on, N. <clears throat> and the graph G of NRS has the set of vertices consisting of all possible R element subsets of, the, of this N element set. And uh, the two subsets, for example, A and B are connected, are joined by an edge, if and only if their intersection is exactly equal to S. 
uh, such graphs are very, very important in different, different parts of mathematics and computer science. For example, it's very important in coding theory. And uh, here in coding theory, it's called Johnson's graph, as uh, Stanislav told you. Uh, for example, the independence number, the so-called stable independence number of a graph, uh, of this graph stands for the maximum size of a code with one forbidden distance. And the click number of this specific graph with such parameters is responsible for the existence of the so-called Adamar matrix, which is very famous also in coding theory, in combinatorics, and in many, many different applications, etc. In combinatorial geometry, I just don't go into the details. In uh, extremal graph theory, in Ramsey theory, which is also very important for theoretical computer science for algorithms, and I spoke about it in my lecture um, some time ago here. So uh, as for the modularity of G of NRS, we have the following theorem, which is proved together with my students, Patov and Koshalev. Probably some of you know them. Uh, this is just the last two years of studies. And uh, as Stanislav has already shown you, there is an upper bound for uh, some specific range of S and R. There is a, an absolutely new, a very, very recent lower bound, which is not yet published. And uh, so Stanislav has not shown it. He did not have this publication yet, but it's already submitted to a journal. So we have this um, general result, this general lower bound for G of NRS and its maximum modularity here. Uh, and for example, in the case of G of N to one, which is a very specific case, of course, but very important, since uh, if uh, you look inside, you would understand that G of N to one is just a line graph of the complete graph on N vertices. So it's very important. And in this case, it's, uh, it's possible not only to bound from above or from below uh, the limb or limb soup, but to calculate the exact value and then to calculate, of course, its limit and then tends to infinity, but the exact value is known here. It's due to Ipatov. So, uh, for Knezer's graphs in the case of S equal to zero, uh, the maximum modularity tends to zero. So it's also like a dense graph in some sense. Uh, the last slide is maybe the simplest possible from uh, all the slides which I've, I've already shown to you. Uh, in some simple models, uh, we also can find the exact value of modularity without using any algorithm, just by mathematical uh, considerations. For example, uh, this is not so interesting. For example, in uh, random deregular graphs, there were some results by Pralat, Prokhorenko, and myself, by McDiarmid, by Skerman. But uh, maybe what is more interesting here is that uh, even for a cycle on vertices, for a simple cycle on vertices, the maximum modularity uh, was found very, very recently, just uh, inside the last 10 years. And it tends to one with this uh, rate of convergence uh, as n tends to infinity. For example, for trees with maximum degree of the vertex uh, equal to delta of Tm, and uh, which is little o of m, as m tends to infinity, so we consider a sequence of trees. Uh, the modularity is also bounded from below by something tending to one as m tends to infinity. And this is also an absolutely recent result by famous mathematicians who were interested in finding these asymptotics. Uh, for example, for random planar graphs, and you understand how planar graphs are important for mathematics and for algorithms, uh, with high probability uh, Q star, the maximum modularity is also very, very close to one as n tends to infinity with this term uh, of um, error term. For nearly complete graphs, it's also possible to prove that the modularity is exactly equal to zero absolutely the same as for the complete graphs. So not only for the complete graphs, we have the modularity equal to zero, but also for such graphs whose number of edges is close to the number of edges of a complete graph, as it is written down here in this formula. 
uh, in complete multipartite graphs, it's also possible to find this value and to show that it's equal to zero. <clears throat> so there exist a lot of different results in this area and almost all of them were obtained in the last few years. This shows that uh, the problem is very important for many, many applications for many from both mathematical point of view and computer science point of view. And so when I understood that Huawei wants to present this problem today, I was excited, absolutely, absolutely excited. Thank you very much for your attention. It's all my comments. I would like to say that mathematics is really beautiful by itself, but this way it helps to computer science, to many other applications. And I invite you to this wide and very interesting area. Join us. Thank you very much.